Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. This is the Minister M.L. Kimball coming to you guys live this evening. We are going to get into our Bible study here. I want to make sure that I have everything correct here on my screen. So uh, be, be uh, just bear with me here. I want to make sure all, that we are live on all of our platforms. I want to say good evening to you. And I want to thank you guys for all of your support, all of our supporters that are watching us from, I mean, we have support from all over the place. I'm really, 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 truly thankful. And uh, I'm appreciative of every person that supports this vision, this ministry, this channel. And, you know, since I've ever, since I've been woke up to this truth and woke up to what this has to, you know, uh, uh, the, the knowledge that we need to know, uh, I've been on a quest to share every single thing that I possibly can with you. Why? Because some kind of way they have convinced us that these books and these scriptures are not part of the Holy Scriptures, which I find very, 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 very ridiculous seeing that they've kept these same scriptures in your Bible. If you look at the Catholic Bible, these script, these these books that they took out and said that they were no longer scriptures anymore, somehow they left those scriptures in their Bible, but told you that these scriptures are not canonized. That is where the scam begins. And so I am not going to sit back and learn information and, and, and not share it with you. That's why we pull up the scripture. So the reality is I want you to like this video, share this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can visit us online at www.kns-ministries.org. Our website, you can go right there and you can see that we've got several different financial passive income opportunities, all kinds of different things you guys can look at on our website. Uh, on our YouTube channel, Money and Prosperity channel, that's the channel that you, uh, you guys need to uh, find us on. Subscribe to that channel. And uh, without anything further, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. We're going to get right into the scripture. Now, you will not see this book in your Bible. Why? Because they took it out. It's the book of Jubilees. I'm going to talk to you about the entire chapter six, and we're going to go through this line by line. And I'm going to stop, give you guys my opinion, my, uh, my, uh, my thoughts on the, the scripture. And we're going to talk about it because this is the stuff that we need to understand that has to do with final last day prophecy. It, it has to do with what the Most High told Moses on the mount, which we were told that he went up there and got the Ten Commandments. Well, it didn't take the Most High 40 days to give Moses the Ten Commandments. So if that's what you thought. Well, unfortunately, that's the information that we need to talk about. So right without further ado, Jubilees chapter number six and verse one says, and on the new moon of the third month, he went forth from the ark and built an altar on that mountain and he made atonement for the earth. So we're talking about Noah here and took a kid and made atonement by its blood for all the guilt of the earth for everything that had been on it had been destroyed save those that were in the ark with Noah. And he placed the fat thereof on the altar and he took an ox and a goat and a sheep and kids and salt and a turtle dove and the young of a dove and placed an ascending smoke sacrifice on the altar and poured thereon an offering mingled with oil and sprinkled wine and strewed frankincense over everything and caused a goodly savior to arise acceptable before Yahuwah. And Yahuwah smelled the goodly savor, and he cut a covenant with him that there should not be any more a flood to destroy the earth, that all the days of the earth, seed time and harvest should never cease, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night should not change their order nor cease forever. And you increase you and multiply upon the earth and become many upon it and be a blessing upon it. The fear of you and the dread of you, I will inspire in everything that is on earth and in the sea. And behold, I have given unto you all the beasts and all winged things and everything that moves on the earth and the fish in the waters and all things for food. As the green herbs, I have given you all things to eat. But flesh with the life thereof, with the blood, you shall not eat. For the life of all flesh is in the blood lest your blood of your lives be required. At the hand of every man and at the hand of every beast will I require the blood of man. 
Whoso sheds man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of Elohim made he man. So I want to stop right there and ask the question of why do we think abortion is okay? The scripture says, whoso sheds man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of Elohim made he man. So you don't have the right to destroy an image that was made after the Most High Yah. You don't have a right to take a life that you did not give. That's what the scripture says. I don't care what your issue one says. The scripture says, whoso sheds a man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of Elohim made he man. And you increase you and multiply on the earth. And Noah and his son swore that they would not eat any blood that was in any flesh. And he cut covenant before Yahuwah forever throughout all the generations of the earth in this month. On this account, he spoke to you. He's talking about Moses, that you should cut a covenant with the children of Israel in this month upon the mount with an oath. And that you should sprinkle blood upon them because of all the words of the covenant which Yahuwah cut with them forever. And this testimony is written concerning you that you should observe it continually so that you should not eat on any day any blood of beast or birds or cattle during all the days of the earth. And the man who eats the blood of beast or of cattle or of birds during all of the days of the earth, he and his seed shall be rooted out of the land. So that's your medium rare steaks. I don't care what they said is a delicacy. The Most High said, don't do it. And do you command the children of Israel to eat no blood so that their names and their seed may be before Yahuwah continually? And for this Torah, there is no limit of days for it is forever. So explain to me how this changed if he put the words forever there. They shall observe it throughout their generations so that they may continue supplicating on your behalf with blood before the altar every day and at the time of morning and evening, they shall seek forgiveness on your behalf perpetually before Yahuwah that they may guard it and not be rooted out. And he gave to Noah and his sons a sign that there should not again be a flood on the earth. He set his bowl, rainbow, not your bowl for any other reason besides this reason in the cloud for a sign of the eternal covenant that there should not again be a flood on the earth to destroy it all the days of the earth. Any other rainbow flag is a scam. This is the reason for the rainbow. Get mad at me if you want to. Unfriend me. I could care less. We're reading the scripture. For this reason, it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets that they should celebrate the feast of Shuavoth in this month once a year to renew the covenant every year. So why are we talking about Thanksgiving? Why are we talking about Christmas? Why are we talking about all of these other things but except what he said to talk about? Why isn't anybody paying attention to the feast of Shuavoth? You want to get mad at me because I tell you Halloween is a scam and Christmas is a scam. You should be thankful somebody cares enough to tell you that you are taking part of other nations. And this whole feast was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation to the days of Noah, 26 jubilees and five years, weeks of years. And Noah and his sons observed it for seven jubilees and one week of years till the day of Noah's death. And from the day of Noah's death, his sons did away with it until the days of Abraham, and then they ate blood. But Abraham observed it, and Isaac, and Jacob, and his children observed it up to your days. And in your days, the children of Israel forgot it until you celebrated it anew this mountain. He's talking to Moses. And do you command the children of Israel to observe this feast in all their generations for a commandment unto them? One day in the year, in this month, they shall celebrate the feast. For it is the feast of Shuavath and the feast of fruit, first fruits of the wheat harvest. This feast is twofold and of double nature, according to what is written and engraved concerning it celebrated. So no one said you can't celebrate, but what are you celebrating? 
Are you celebrating what the Most High said celebrate, or are you coming up with your own scamified holiday? Your Christmas, your Thanksgiving, your Father's Day, your Mother's Day. It's all a scam. Where is it in the scripture? Then he goes and says, for I have written it in the Sefer of the first Torah and with that which I have written for you, that you should celebrate it in its season one day in the year. And I explain to you its sacrifices that the children of Israel should remember and should celebrate it throughout their generations in this month, one day in every year. I'm sorry. Where did that change? Where was that no longer valid? Where did he say, I'm changing my mind? And on the new moon of the first month and on the new moon of the fourth month and on the new moon of the seventh month and on the new moon of the 10th month, all are the days of remembrance and the days of the seasons and the four divisions of the year. These are written and ordained as a testimony forever. And nor ordained them for himself as feast for generations forever so that they have become thereby a memorial unto him. And on the new moon of the first month, he was bidden to make for himself an ark. And on that day, the earth became dry and he opened the ark and saw the earth. And on the new moon of the fourth month, the months, mouths of the depths of the abyss beneath were closed. And on the new moon of the seventh month, all the mouths of the abysses of the earth were open and the waters began to descend into them. And on the new moon of the 10th month, tenth month, the tops of the mountains were seen and Noah was glad. And on this account, he ordained them for himself as feasts for a memorial forever. And thus are they ordained. And they placed them on the heavenly tablets. Each had 13 weeks for one to another past their memorial from the first to the second and from the second to the third and from the third to the fourth. And all the days of the commandment will be two and 50 weeks of days. And these will make the entire year complete. Thus, it is engraved and ordained on the heavenly tablets. And there is no neglecting this commandment for a single year or from year to year. And command you, the children of Israel, that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days. So where did they come up with 365 days? I need somebody to explain that to me like I'm a two-year-old. If he said 364 days, then your leap year is a scam. He says, and these will constitute a complete year and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feasts. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons and the years will be dislodged from this order. We've dislodged it. We've dislodged the seasons from the order. And they will disturb the seasons and the years will be dislodged and they will neglect their ordinances. This is what the Most High is telling Moses. And all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years and will forget the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths. That's your Sunday morning, your Sunday morning scam service. The Sabbath day is not on Sunday. You've already missed the Sabbath day. I'm sorry. And they will go wrong as to the all the order of the years. For I know and from henceforth. Forth, Will I declare it unto you, and it is not of my own devising, for the sephir lies written before me. And on the heavenly tablets, the division of days is ordained, lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the other nations after their error and after their ignorance. For there will be those who will assuredly make observance observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order, making an abominable day of day of day, the day of testimony. Sunday, that's an abominable day. Why? Because you're copying the Catholic Church. And an unclean day is feast day, your Thanksgiving. That's an unclean day. And they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy, for they will go wrong as to the months and the Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. 
For this reason, I command and testify to you that you may testify to them. For after your death, who? Moses, your children will disturb them so that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths and feasts, and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. If you don't understand why this was covered up and they took this out of your book, then I don't know what else to tell you. This is prophecy. Today, in time prophecy, but for some reason, they have convinced you not to read it. If you don't understand that we are living in a land of captivity that did not obey the Most High nor obeyed anything concerning his word, then you are sadly mistaken. If you are going to church on Sunday because your preacher told you that this is the day that the Lord has made, you are sadly mistaken. The Sabbath day was never supposed to be on a Sunday, but yet the Catholic Church changed it. And for some reason, you as a Christian, quote unquote, follower of the Most High, don't see the games. You don't see the scams. Well, the bottom line is these things are put right here. And the scripture says to study to show yourself approved. Well, if you're going to reject everything you study, then what's the point of you studying? I come to you with what I study, and we look at nothing but what the scripture says. I'm the minister, M.L. Kimball. Be blessed on purpose.